tuned in to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. What's up, St. Louis? We are back. This is week four, I believe. And it's been going real, real fast. Hope everybody doing real good out here on this Memorial Day weekend. It's Sunday. And I know a lot of you all went to church. Everybody back. People are starting to get back into the church house. People are starting to do events. People are starting to go places. Um, You know, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, I'm just excited that uh, we're not out the weeds yet. So uh, I don't want anybody to think we out the weeds. But welcome back to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. Uh, We got a special guest today. Uh, As you know, all my guests are special guests. And uh, we're going to have a good conversation today. Uh, We have... uh, a former legislator from the great state of Missouri. Um, he see, I let the cat out the bag. I said he, so he actually, um, succeeded his dad in the position that he served in. And, uh, he's going to talk to us about, you know, his career in politics. Um, I don't think he's done. Uh, you know, he had a, he had a he had a he had a run he had a run at a Senate that, that didn't come out the way we wanted it to, but we'll uh, give him a chance to speak to that as well and just talk and see what he has going on. And I keep saying he I ain't said his name yet, but I'm gonna bring him on the screen. Uh, we have with us today, Reverend Tommy Pearson Jr. Yes, sir. What's up, uh, Tommy, man? How hey, are you, man? Hey, welcome to the Politics Podcast, man. Hey, you, my, you are my fourth guest. Man, I feel show, special. Man. I feel special. You know, in baseball, the fourth hitter in the lineup <laughs> was the one you that you would hope would hit a home run. So, so that's what we're going after today, man. So yes. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being uh, yes. allowing me uh, to, to be a part of of what I hope to be a long standing oh yeah uh position here to feel in the area of uh just informing the folks on what's going on in, in St. Louis politics. So I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. You know, that's my whole goal, man. When I when I created the show, man, you know, I was you know, you know, you see all the shows we got, you know, you got your your shows that come on the radio and then you you got all the mess, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. I think uh, St. Louis is much greater than the mess that's always talked about, man. So yeah. I wanted to make sure I highlighted, um, you know, the positive things that was going on in our community. And I also want to introduce people uh, who not normally own the TV all the time yeah. and all that to the world, man. So, you know, because yeah. my show is heard all over, you know, it's not just in St. Louis, man. And so I appreciate you coming in and you, you one of the positive people that I always have seen, um, you know, just doing something positive, not only just for your community, man, but you're a family man, you're a husband, yeah. you're a pastor, you're a son, you're yeah. an uncle, you know. <laughs> so, you know, um, it's always good to to prop the positivity up in our community, man. And so yeah. uh, if you just tuned in, uh, we are uh, sitting down with former state representative Tommy Pearson, Jr., uh, Reverend, the good Reverend, and uh, he's gonna. We're just gonna have a conversation today, uh, awesome. with uh, Reverend Tommy Pearson, man. And so, uh, Reverend Pearson, I'm calling, yes, you, I'm calling you Tommy, call man. me Tommy, man. That, that, that's it, man. <laughs> yeah, we um, kicking it today, man. This Sunday, this Sunday afternoon, man, Memorial yes, Day weekend, man. So, kind of tell our listening audience who you are, man, and just kind of, I guess, take us through your life. In two minutes, let's in see. Let's see, let's see if you can do that for us. Let us know where you, let us know where you came from, and, and where you are, and where you're going. Interesting. In two minutes, that <laughs> is a challenge, especially for someone who has Reverend in front of their name. But, right. but let's see what we can do. That's right. Uh, I, I am born and raised here in St. Louis. 
uh, blessed to uh, have loving parents who you know are still around. Thank God for that. Who have molded me and shaped me to have a a love for people. And so I, I will say that you know the crux of the things that I've been able to do uh, in this life journey has been uh, revolving around a love for people. So um, went to you know graduated from high school, went to college here at Wash Washington University here in St. Louis. Got a degree in math. Um, went away to Cincinnati to study biostatistics and. So I did that, uh, started working uh, there in Cincinnati for Johnson & Johnson, and then made my way back to St. Louis once I found uh, a young lady who I couldn't let get away. That's and, right. And she made me, uh, I, I shouldn't say that. She, she in, I, I was intrigued to make intrigued. my way back to St. Louis. <laughs> so, so I started working at Boeing, uh, started working there, uh, worked there for about six years, and then the Lord called me into the ministry. So I went into the ministry um, and worked in the ministry. I uh, was able to do that full time for a while uh, and then went into education. So I taught math uh, okay. here in the Hazelwood School District. And, and I did that uh, for a while um, and then felt the calling to go into uh, into elected office. You stated that my father was a uh, former state representative before me. He decided to run for a different office uh, and the opportunity to succeed him uh, in or as uh, the next state representative uh, was there. And folks began to ask if that was something that I would be interested in doing. At first, I said no. <laughs> um, and at first, my wife had a word before no. <laughs> uh, but was that, word hot? was that word hot? Did it have some heat? It, it was heck. It, it was heck. <laughs> it, it was heck. No. Um, <laughs> but we prayed about it, and you know, Lord uh, softened her, her heart, and and we were able to to move forward and uh, ran for state representative in the 66th district here in North County. Uh, we were able to serve in Jefferson City for four years as you mentioned, uh, ran for state Senate, came up short. Uh, that was a year ago. And um, and so here we are. Um, so I think my two minutes are up. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, that's just kind of a quick, uh, yeah, a quick you, and dirty you did, journey of kind of where we good, are. Man. Appreciate and, it. And you filled in all those gaps, man, because, um, you know, sometimes when you are an elected official, People only know what they know in that moment. Sometimes they don't know the, the history of what you've done before. And sometimes some people don't know what you're doing outside of uh, politics. Sometimes, you know, sometimes yeah. when people yeah. meet you in politics, that's all they know. And, uh, you know, I know your family. We got history. Yes, uh, sir. I ran, I yes, ran sir. against your pops when I first uh, got into politics. Yeah. Uh, but, but me and your dad, man, had a man. We had probably one of the best talks I think I've ever had with a man. Yeah. Um, and that was, um, at the actual polls. So, you know, people was, uh, running, going in, voting and me and him. And that's one thing I like about your dad, man, your dad, whether somebody running against him or, or whatever, your dad's still going to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? Even, even if people don't even like, like your daddy, but they talk to him, your daddy's still going to talk to him, man. And that's one thing I really admire about your pops, man. But me and him had a, Man, we had a great talk, you know, and, yeah. and I, I straight up told your dad, I said, hey, but I ain't got nothing against you. I just want to serve, too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, yeah. But he told me, he said, man, you get with me uh, after this over. So he already had in his head he was going to beat me. So he, <laughs> he was like, he said, you get with me after this over, man, and you stick with me, man. And I, I can I can show you some things and, you know, mentor you and all that. And he. He, he kept his word, man, you know, and, and he did beat me, you know, but, <laughs> but but that's one of them things, though, man, in politics, man, people do not, some people don't know how to, like, just get over, like, okay, I lost, now it's time to go do something else, like, it's that's not right. the end of the world, uh, right. it's not gonna be the first time you lose something, um, but, but and I don't even look at it as a loss, man, I look at it as a lesson, you know that's what I'm right. saying, I, I don't right. ever, I don't ever feel like I've lost anything 
um, when things didn't come out the way I, I wanted them to to come out, man. But it's been a it's been a blessing, um, yeah. you know, being around you, your family, man, your wife and your dad Appreciate and your mom, man. And yeah, interestingly enough, man, I don't know if you uh, know, but you got a cousin, I think that that's a YouTuber. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. And me, and me and my wife, we me and my wife, we got a YouTube channel too. So we do food reviews. Yes, sir. That's another life. You know what I'm saying? I'm versatile, man. Right. But, <laughs> but I, I met a I met your cousin on uh YouTube because the YouTube, the YouTube community, like when mm -hmm. you're a creator, we like kind of network and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she, um, she knew that I was from St. Louis. She was on one of my videos and stuff like that. And then yeah. we made the connection. I'm like, oh, that's wild, you know? So right. So, so they were in they were in town for some type of family function, and mm -hmm. um, she said, you know, I got to go and 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 meet, you know, this fellow YouTuber and this that, and the other. I said, well, who is it? Who is it? <laughs> and and said your name. I said, oh, wow. <laughs> I know him. I, I feel good, man. It, it felt good to know Terry Wilson. Uh, so I said, I know him, and, and they were excited to be able to connect and do all of that, man. Yeah. So like you say, versatile. It's, it's good to be versatile, good to be out here. And you had that personality for it, man, anyway. So I already <laughs> knew it would it would be successful. So, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Man, we, we, hey, we only live one life, man, and, you know, we, we shouldn't live with regrets. You know what I mean? So, that's right. um, you know, when you get an idea, you know, this for everybody that's out there listening. If, if you get an idea about something uh, and you want to do it, hey, do it. You know, it's only it's only one or two things going to happen. You're going to be successful or you ain't go or you ain't going to be as successful as you thought you was going to be. <laughs> well, say, it's, and it's a lesson in all of it. It's a lesson you know, in all of it. Lesson in all of it. Yeah. yeah so, man, let's uh let's talk about. um. Let's talk about your political journey, man, because uh, when you did get elected, it was a three way. It was a three way race when you ran. Right. Yes. Twenty seven. Yes. Was it twenty seventeen when you it uh, was time uh, go by so fast, man? I can't. It, it was twenty fifteen. So I was there from sixteen to twenty. OK. Uh, OK. Or, or sixteen to nineteen, sixteen, seventeen and then eighteen, nineteen. So, um, yeah. So so it was it was that four year stretch. Okay. And yeah, so that that first uh, that first election, it was a it was a three way race, yeah. and um, yeah, so yeah. we were able to come out successful there. I didn't know all of what I was getting into going to, going to Jeff City. Uh, I don't think um, I don't think nobody do when I don't think exactly. I don't think anybody does when 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 they it, it's it, it's a different world. It, it it really is. It's a different world. Um, but but I went there to, you know, people is that the love of people, the passion for people, uh, to, to do some good for people. That was always on my heart. And, you know, one of the things that I remember as that freshman legislator, uh, one of the guys uh, in, in one of the early meetings we had, he was like, you know, the three words I'm going to give you to focus on, you know, I guess in real estate is location, location, location. Right. And he said it's relationships, relationships and relationships. And so that was something that that stuck with me. Uh, and so that ability to meet people, talk to people, uh, try to find some common ground and some common lanes, you know, being a part of the super minority in uh, Jefferson City uh, was just something that I looked to uh, to do as we tried to get a few things done there in, in Jefferson City uh, for the people. So then I was able to, to move up in leadership there in our Democratic caucus there uh, in Jefferson City. Um, just to, to provide leadership for, you know, a group of Democratic legislators who were coming together from across the state there in Jefferson City. So it, it, it was definitely a, a, a great opportunity yeah. um, to, to meet folks, to again, establish those relationships and, and you know, make, get, some, get some small victories uh, along the way. So, oh, yeah, abso yeah, absolutely, man. And, and uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned that that whole thing relationship 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 because I had a my first actual guest was my mother uh, you on the show. And, You're a wise man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and and one, one of the big things that we talked about uh, was relationships and mm -hmm. relationship building and the importance of that, especially 
in politics, man, because you can't truly get anything done by yourself. You are correct. And and you have to have those relationships. And one thing I noticed about you uh when you went to Jeff City, um you made sure you built those relationships and you built some unique relationships. Uh, I remember I recall a time when um you had uh, your town hall and you brought um the Missouri Conservation Department down here and you know a lot of people in our community aren't really familiar with uh, what, um, you know, the Missouri conservation does and nature and all that type of stuff. But I saw that you was willing to learn, man. And you got out there, you got your hands dirty. I saw you was in rural Missouri. And so you were able to bring that knowledge back um, to St. Louis County uh, in an urban area uh, and kind of be versatile, you know, uh, yeah. when you're serving, man. And so that was one thing I really admired about you. You wasn't afraid to to jump outside the norm. Because I know some people, man, they get up there and they just stick with the black hole. And, right. and, and that's and, it. And, 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 you know, as, 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 as black people, as folks from the urban core or whatever, we get called, you know, we, we still, we, we are more interested we are interested in um, how the police treat us. Yeah, you know, we 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 are interested in in education, but but we are holistic. You know, we, we're interested in every facet of Missouri government. Absolutely. And so that that was, you know, I had to ask myself because I got appointed to the Natural Resources and Conservation Committee. Yeah. And and I had to say to myself, OK, why, why am I here? Yeah. You know, here's this guy from North St. Louis. Why, why am I on this committee? And right. but it was an opportunity to learn. It was an opportunity to to grow. It was an opportunity to find out, you know, we have a, a conservation center in North County. Yeah. You know, we have uh, a Department of Conservation right close to where the Missouri Veterans Home is on 367. You know, so so we have all of these things that are in our community that we don't really know much about. And um, yet they impact us uh, on a daily basis. And and then it began to turn into, OK, so how can we utilize and use these things in a way that can be a benefit uh, to the community and expose even some of our younger folks? to conservation, to right. uh, all of these types of things. Um, because I believe all of those, they go hand in hand. Absolutely. You know, it, uh, an appreciation for what's going on around you and nature and all of that right. can help alleviate stress and, and things of that nature. So man, all, all of it, it I agree it, it was a learning opportunity is what I took it as an opportunity to learn and grow and not just me grow, but then help use what I've been able to learn uh, to help others. So that, that's, that's what it was about for me. Yeah, man. So, so what was, so being in Jeff city, being away from your family Monday through Thursday um, was it six months out of the year. Uh, and then sometimes uh, longer than that with special session. Uh, <laughs> what, what was, what was one of the hardest things about not even just the political part of, of being a state rep, but what was one of the hardest things about um being a state representative man uh at the time that you were a state representative what was what was give me two things two two things that was just probably the most challenging that you would say uh while serving um up, up there in the house I'll, I'll give one that's common and i'll give one that was probably unique to my situation so one that was common is certainly family and developing a different rhythm that we had to develop as a family and so, you know, being a, a, a family man, I have, uh, you know, two sons, a daughter. They were two of them were in high school, junior high and elementary. So so we kind of had to develop a different rhythm and I had to learn how to prioritize them in a different way. So, you know, I, I had to make sure that I continued to be dad and was there for them, but just there for them in a different way. Um, so so that was one challenge that that we were able to overcome, find what that rhythm was and and make it work for us. You know, one of the, I guess, kind of unique challenges I was 
on the uh, committee as we were looking into the, you know, the, the mess that was happening with our former governor. Right. And, and, and that opened my eyes in a whole different way as it related to um, just the level of um, the, the intensity that different outside groups have, even on Missouri politics. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we see an individual and really think it's about that individual but not really having an understanding of all of the people, the hands, the groups, the organizations yeah. that have been involved in moving and putting that individual where they are. And so really seeing that, um, what was a, a, an interesting and kind of a unique uh, experience to be a part of during that, uh, during my tenure there uh, in Jefferson City. So, yeah, that's the, hey man. I tip my hat off because, you know, I was <laughs> I was talking to my wife uh, the other day and I was like, man, you know, I really did want to be a state rep then. <laughs> um, but, when you know, when they say God got another plan for you, man, I think God knew what he was doing when 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 I didn't go up there. You know, yeah. and I, I see everything that I see the challenges that you all go through um, yeah. just just trying to do simple things, you know, and it's, and it's tough. And I think our community uh, has a, has a tough time really dealing with what a state rep does, what a state Senator does versus a city councilman and a mayor. Because I know sometimes you got probably a lot of times you got calls that were pretty much local issues, but you kind of feel obligated. Like I, I, I represent these people, so I got to at least come up with an answer or some type of solution uh, mm -hmm. for them, man. So, so how did you kind of navigate through those uh, different uh, requests that came <laughs> came to your office, your email, your phone, and out on the street in the uh, grocery store? Uh, yeah. how, how did you kind of make? The, how did you navigate through through those different uh, layers of uh, requests from folks? Because I know right. I know you the type that want to help everybody, but Right. And, we, and, and doing we, your role, man, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. And and we certainly in our office tried to, to, to ensure that while we were not able to um, directly engage in every one of the calls that came to our office, we wanted to make sure that those individuals who made those calls got serviced. Yeah. And so it, it again kind of came down to those relationships. So you know, if it was a legal concern, then who who do we know? Who can we call to ensure that this is what it needs to be? Right. And and then that that loop gets closed. And if it's a you know if it's a municipal issue, so I can call the mayor right. and, and have a good relationship with the mayor to say, look, this is what's going on. Can you help so and so? Nine out of t nine times out of ten, they know who so and so is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and probably have already had a few uh, conversations with so and so. Right? right. So. So then we in our office don't have to kind of spin our wheels doing some things that have already uh, taken place. So. So. So really being what what I found to be effective as a legislator is is to really be able to have the relationships in place to be able to make phone calls to people and not have to say, oh, this is, you know, this is Tommy from, but, you know, Tommy Pearson Jr., this is representative, right. you know, so-and-so. I could just say this Tommy and, and, right. and then have that conversation. And then hopefully that then kind of bumps up that mm -hmm. issue uh, on behalf of what the constituents' concern was. Yeah, uh, man, I, mm -hmm. and I think, you, I think you did a real good job um, – as state rep in terms of those relationships and keeping that, that line of communication, especially in your district. Um, it wasn't an elected official in your district that could really truly say, you know, I couldn't get the Tommy if I needed to, or, mm -hmm. or, or Tommy didn't come support a ribbon cutting or <laughs> basketball uh, reveal, <laughs> you know, uh, graduations. Uh, um, yeah. you, you had what was it two school? Was it no, was it, was it three school districts that you represented, right? 
Facebook. Well, yeah. actually, it was four. So it was because because the district has a little bit of St. Louis City. Which oh, is yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so it, it was just a little, little sliver of, of St. Louis City. We had a little bit of Jennings, mm -hmm. all the pretty much all the Riverview, and yeah. then Hazelwood. So primarily Hazelwood East, and so yeah, so it it, it required a uh, you know a, an opportunity yeah. to get to know all of those superintendents, and that's kind of how I saw it as an opportunity, you know, to get to know them, have relationships with them, uh, and see how we could be helpful to them uh, in Jefferson City because you know those are the people who the things that we do, did in Jefferson City, that's who it would affect, right? You know? So if, if we come up with some type of legislation uh, that they were aware of and it would impact them in some kind of negative way, then they immediately knew it. And we're able to say, look, this is this is how that affects us and uh, and hope that you vote accordingly. Right. You know? and, and then <laughs> and then you go from there. You will be amazed at how many people hope that you vote accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they probably won't say it like that. But right. there you have it. But they'll, they'll definitely they'll definitely say it in a way where you kind of get it though. You get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. <laughs> so, so so you were an educator, uh, you had experience in business. Um, you just had a you had a variety of experiences before uh being a state uh representative, man. So how important would you say it is uh for someone going into uh let's say uh, being a state rep or a senator, how important do you think it is in having all of those, <clears throat> having a variety of experiences um, going into uh, being a state legislator? Like how important is that when it comes to you making decisions and coming up with legislations and stuff? Yeah, like that? I, I think it's very important. You know, it's very important that you have the ability to know, to know what you know and then know what you don't know. Right. And and to be confident in those things. So not feeling like you have to know it all. Right. Uh, but you're confident in what expertise you bring to to the team, to the table, whatever. And then have the ability to say, you know, I, I, I don't know. I can find out or, or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, but but it's always good to know. What it is that that person brings to you know, as your representative, as the one who is representing you before a different body uh, is is to know what they bring with them. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, it certainly is important. You know, one of the things that off, that I was shocked by was the range of topics that the legislature deals with. Yeah, because you deal with. You know, things folks know, you know, education and, you know, police reform and voting rights and elections. And then you got the nature stuff, the, you know, feral hogs and, and all this kind of stuff. I, I was like, what what kind of hog is that? You know, so <laughs> it, it's amazing just the wide range of, of topics that uh, come at you, not to mention some of the utility stuff. And yeah. and that was kind of a whole different language to, to, to learn and then budgets and finances and, and all of that. So, you know, to be able to be versed in those things is certainly um, and, and to be able to be versed in those things quickly and yeah. and and to to have that to where, you know, you, you're not there long. <laughs> you know, and if it take you five years to figure out, you know, how to get an amendment on the bill, then you <laughs> we just wait for five years, you know. So and then it's time to come back home. Then man. it's time to come back home. And, and <laughs> yeah. so it, it it's it's very it's very important and it's good to um to know who it is that that you're sending to ensure that they have that uh that that background. That makes sense. We're going to take a quick 30 second break. We'll be back. We got our former state representative. He's still my state rep. Uh, <laughs> the Reverend Tommy Pearson. You're get in we'll trouble, be... man. You're going to get in trouble. Now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in just a second. Uh, this is the hip hop gardener from Blackberry Landscaping. 
And when I'm ever listening to an app or podcast shows, I'm listening to the hottest show in the loop, The Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. You better ask somebody. This is Chloe with Vassals Comfort Shoes and Custom Insoles, your diabetic shoe supplier in St. Louis. You're listening to the hottest show in the loop, The Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. Tuned in to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. All right, we are back. Yes, sir. We've been having a great conversation with my man, Reverend Tommy Pearson Jr., former state representative of the 66th District, pastor of is it in step church? in step church yes in-step sir church. yes sir the son of the legendary reverend tommy pearson jr mayor of the great city of bell fountain want to welcome everybody back if you're just now tuning in having a great conversation uh with my man tommy yes sir. so so brother pearson i gotta ask you this so we talked about the importance of relationships how difficult was it getting all of the democrats on the same page and because i you know (laughs) it's funny that i'm asking that but you 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 think with a super minority uh it it would be a tight-knit group um, but I know sometimes it don't go off that way because um, you have a lot of different facets that go into the Democratic caucus. Yes, uh, if you would, if you would. So you got you got females, you got males, you have black, you got white, uh, you have the LGBT community. Um, I don't know. Do we have any Hispanic um, members of the caucus? Not during my time. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, and then you got a couple of people that that might not be from St. Louis. So you got St. Louis versus Kansas City. Then you got rural versus uh, urban. Then you got St. Louis City versus St. Louis County. So everybody got all their issues, but we're all in the umbrella, the big yeah. tent <laughs> of uh, the Democratic Party. Um, so how was it, man, when it came to, uh, you know, really just coming together on, on certain issues, uh, with the democratic party, I ain't even talking about reaching across the aisle. I'm talking about yeah. right in our backyard with the party, man. How, um, yeah. how difficult was that? And, and did you have any successes and, and, and did you have some challenges kind of, kind of speak to that? Yeah. So it, it could be, um, it could be described as, you know, herding cats in the dark room. You know, it, it, it would be a lot of time coordinating. You know, one of the things that that I tried to ensure that we had because we had a lot of different personalities, a lot of, you know, when you are an elected official, you have been very busy talking about yourself. Right. You know. And you see your name on signs and billboards and everything else and and, and all of this. And now you kind of have to put that aside to come together with this, with a, a group and try to work together. And, you know, one of the things that I would always emphasize is is respect and respect. Number one, what people bring, what their lived experience has been, what has brought them uh, there. And, and to respect their perspective. And, and perhaps you are able to learn something different as you listen to a different perspective. But there should be, as we would leave the caucus room or whatever the case may be, those things that should always keep us connected in some in some form or fashion. Absolutely. You know, the 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 general welfare of the people. And ensuring that that is front and center in the things that we do and say and how we vote. If you can make that connection, 
then those will be some things that we can always be able to look back on and tie us together. Um, and, and so that was always something that I would try to uh, make sure that that we had as uh, that kind of common bond uh, to lead and keep our caucus moving together and not to fracture over in, in some often kind of smaller stuff, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, as opposed to the big picture, because most of our fights that I wanted us to have were not with the the people in the caucus. But, right. you know, once we would go upstairs and and get out on the floor and, and, and then have those debates and issues uh, with 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 those who really didn't see eye to eye on many of the issues that came before us as a body. Um, so, you know, that that as a part of leadership in the caucus, those were certainly some things that I've, I, I, I worked hard to ensure that that we had. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, man, you you definitely um, were like the peacemaker, I would say, um, <laughs> you know, you the voice of reason in a lot of a lot of things. Um, so what was um, what was one of your proudest moments, man, serving uh, in the house, man? Um, one of the proudest moments that is, that's a, that's a good question. Cause a lot of times I honestly, I don't think about, you know, kind of me a lot, you know, right. but, um, you know, it, it, it was certainly good to, so, so when we started, we didn't have, as an example, so when, 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 when I started, there was nobody from North County on the budget. Right? Mm -hmm. So that was, that was one thing. And so I said, look, you know, I went to leadership and said, at some point we're going to have to make a change. This, this is going to have to change. And so when things happened, the opportunities presented themselves. Right. Um, and uh, so I was able to get on the budget and because I saw that as a place where you can kind of make some moves yeah, and, and it not be, on the floor in front of everybody. Right. But you can get some money moved into some different places mm -hmm. and and just know that you got some money moved in some different places. A absolutely. You know, um, you know, we did some stuff with with agriculture, Department of Agriculture, as an example. Mm -hmm. um, and we moved, we're able to move, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into urban agriculture. Right. And so they put an urban ag um a program together as an example. And then it was a matter of getting some of our urban ag folks to take advantage of it. And they were able to get get some funds and funding to move some of their projects forward. So so it 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 was some, you know, some some victories along that realm that that we were able to to just kind of celebrate. You know, I remember the Missouri Technology Corporation you know, um, entrepreneurship is mm -hmm. something that, you know, I always want to promote because I think if we have folks who will start jobs, uh, then they will create jobs and then they are able to hire folks perhaps that, that, that have a similar background experience that they have. And so, you know, there was some funding cut from the MTC. We were able to get some money restored there which helped the, the St. Louis ecosystem uh, for uh, entrepreneurship. So just some, some uh, budget victories along those lines were, were some that immediately kind of come to mind as some things that uh, we were able to, to, to celebrate uh, and, and have an impact in, in the area and in the community. So yeah, that's, that's huge, man. I mean, budget is very important. You know, mm -hmm. I, I sit on the, uh, well, I'm the chairman of the ways and means for the city of Jennings, man. And I, I see that, that, I mean, that's the transmission and the engine of, <laughs> of, of moving uh, policy and everything in our community, yeah. man. So yeah. it all start with the budget. How are we going to pay for it? Where's it going to come right. from? You know, that's right. Where, where, where money for this at, you know? So, because right. as I say, you know, that is your, that is your priority document, you know, yeah. while people see us a lot about money, but it's really about the priorities that you have 
and what you prioritize, you fund. Right. Right. And so, you know, having the opportunity to have some say in where that $33 billion for the state budget, um, I, you know, is, 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 is a big deal, I think. So, yeah. That's what's up, man. So I got a, I got another question for you, man. So I know your, your dad was a big, uh, played a big role in your life. Um, and, it, and you know, it's, you know, it's, it's good to have a, a father and it's important to have a father now. Mm -hmm. uh, who who would you say, give me three people um, that you would say were a big influence um, in your life and you, you use a lot of the advice that they taught you uh, as an adult. So give me, give me three people that you would say was a, a big influence in your life and, and kind of why, you know, briefly why. Gotcha. Um, a couple of incidents and, and and two of them are teachers that got come to mind kind of mm -hmm. right off the bat. And, and one was a, a fifth grade teacher who, mm -hmm. and, and I don't recall all the specifics, but he, he posed a question to the group and everybody went one way and I went the other way mm -hmm. uh, in answering the question. And he talked about that for the rest of the time I was at that school mm -hmm. to instill in me the ability to even if everybody else is has answered the question one way if, if you are able to answer it in a different way and ground it somehow mm -hmm. then you need to stand on that yeah. um and 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 so the name was mr may uh another another teacher um in high school uh mr jenkins he um he saw something in me as it relates to just kind of leadership and he encouraged me to be the graduation speaker okay right? and so you know while i was not the valedictorian or the salutatorian he encouraged me to i guess lobby to be the speaker for graduation mm -hmm. and when i was chosen as such I, I, I saw that as just another opportunity and someone who poured into me and, and saw something in me and, and pushed me uh, to develop that as as something that has an opportunity to kind of set you apart. Right. Right. Um, and of course, you know, the old man, I don't know if I wasn't supposed to, to, to mention him or not. <laughs> oh, definitely. I'll, I'll definitely. Give, I, I definitely got to give the old man a shout um, because you know, we, our, our relationship has, I'll, I'll be honest, it has ebbed and flowed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that comes as, as a boy turns into a man. Absolutely. And learns how to interact with his father and then a father learning how to interact with, with his son. And, and and I have enjoyed I've enjoyed the ride the whole way because love has always been there, you know, oh, yeah. the whole time. While we may fuss a little bit, you know, love has been that thing that has certainly kept the 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 the, the bond strong. And yeah. he has certainly um, he he has certainly equipped me in in so many ways. It's always interesting, I think, when I look back, and I would always say. I ain't never been no minister. I ain't being no pastor. I ain't, I'm not doing that. I, right. you know, I would see some of the stuff that the old man would have to deal with, you mm -hmm. know, with different parishioners and things of that nature. And I said, no, you know, that, I, I, I like to say that's why I, I majored in math because I thought it was the furthest thing away, uh, <laughs> perhaps from ministry. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but it's amazing how, you know, God has a different plan, you know, for your life. And now we're able to, uh, both be involved in in ministry and having an impact on people's lives. Never thought I would be in in uh, in elected office in in politics. And because of the relationship that I have with my father, you know, it, it, it's amazing that very often the fruit does not fall far That's from right. the tree. That's right. And um, and, and so those opportunities that presented themselves and, and it's an opportunity to have an impact on people, to have an impact on uh, the community. 
And and really, that's, you know, that, that's always one of my prayers is to be able to have a positive impact on the life in the lives of people. And and so uh, just a few people and a few even some things that seem small kind of as they were happening, but they have stayed with me, impacted me and and helped me along the way. You know, I, I because, you know, you started your podcast with your mother, man, I, I, I have to she I, I, I say the old man is the salt and my mother is the sugar. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> uh, because she's just her demeanor is is so sweet in this one that, you know, and I feel like I kind of got a good little mix of both where, where, oh, where yeah. I can be salty oh, when needed, right. but, but then be sweet when, when you have to be as well. You have so, to, yeah. uh, so, so, man, I, I, I just feel blessed to uh, have, have had uh, different ones and different people, my parents and others uh, in my life to uh, to, you know, bring me and brought me to. Uh, to 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 this place, and so I just appreciate opportunities to give them uh, their shout out, you right? Know, give right. them their flowers, if you will. Absolutely. Um, while while they can smell them, man. So uh, again, appreciate opportunities like this to do that. Ah, right, man, that's a blessing, man. So yeah. we coming down to the end, but I ain't letting you leave yet. <laughs> so uh, you had a, you, you had a you had a run for the Senate. Um, I know you had a, I know you had a little health uh, issue in the midst of, um, and I know things didn't work out how we wanted them to, um, uh, but they, they worked out how, how guys saw fit. Um, mm-hmm. but I know you ain't done time. <laughs> Tell the people what you're doing right now currently. Yes, sir. So currently, um, I'm a bivocational pastor. So, so I pastor a church, I pastor in step church um, and we worship in St. Charles. Uh, And then also I am the business development director for bio rankings, which is uh, basically a group of statisticians and software engineers who are working with researchers in medical, in the medical field uh, to help further their research. Um, so we develop innovative statistical methods uh, to help them solve some of the problems that they have in the research that they're doing. So um, and, and we are a, a, a startup. We were while we before the pandemic, we were in uh, the Cortex area. Um, after the pandemic, we've uh, transitioned to being 100% virtual from home. We'll see where, where things land as we as we keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, so uh, that has been a, a you know a, a wonderful opportunity to see kind of some you know h- how to stay grounded in industry. We working with you know industry researchers, folks in academia, as well. So. Uh, so, so that is certainly keeping me busy uh, these days. Yes, sir. Well, I, I know, I know that we haven't seen the last of Tommy Pearson, the elected official. Um, I, I know you had time to think, and you know, you know, get the hanks off of you after this mm-hmm. this last election. But I know you, you probably, you probably, you know, once it, it's one of those things. Like once it get in you, it's kind of hard to say, you know, I'm just done. Especially when it ain't on your terms. Like you want to be done on your terms. <clears throat> and I know it's a lot of work out there to do. Um. You know, I always told people, you know, just in passing, you know, because I always had good conversations about you behind your back. So <laughs> appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. But I always said that uh I said we ain't seen the last of uh Tommy Pearson, and I think he would be a good asset uh here locally. So, you know, I don't know what you're thinking about or whatever, but you know, let me know what you got going on, and you already know I'm gonna be right there uh with you, man. So uh well, is, well, it, is it the last we heard of you from uh, <laughs> politics or what? Are you going to stay in civilian life or, you know? <laughs> I, I, I am not upset being a civilian. I, I will say that, you okay. know, um, God has also given me a heart to serve. Yes, sir. And, and, and so 
it's really about just willingness to listen and see where I can be of best service. Yes, sir. Um, as as my passion for people, as my passion to see communities thrive, you know, as as my passion to uh, see people doing great things, you know, as as that passion, if that leads me to wherever, yeah. you know, um, I, I'm certainly willing to listen and and have various conversations. So, um, so well, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, what's next? I I know you ain't I know you ain't staying away too long. You know we'll let you have a break, but um, we're gonna find something for you to do. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that because you know <clears throat> if anyone knows uh, that service and what is needed for service, yeah. And I think a fellow servant like yourself, when when I hear that from somebody like you, that means something. Yes, sir. And so I, I appreciate it because you know what goes into it. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you know the sacrifice. You know what it takes. You know, I because I just saw this quote right before we started, man, mm -hmm. and it, <laughs> it resonated with me. It said, we have to stop giving leadership positions to the practice squad. Hey. And, and, I, and I just and that just it made me smile, man. <laughs> And and I and I probably should just leave it there, man. I, 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 I <laughs> hey, that's just, the mic drop right there. I, but I was, hey, <laughs> but it, hey, it's a, it's a powerful statement, man. It's and, a powerful and it holds, statement. It was and it holds so true, man. Especially in the yeah. times we're in right now, man. We we need strong leadership. We need we need strong leadership, uh, and right. we need people that are that are truly here for the people, man. We need uh, thoughtful people in these positions, man, because. You know, the, the days of just doing things, man, um, yep. they need to be done with, you know, yep. uh, and we, we, we dealing with a lot, man, we dealing with so much crime, we dealing with poverty and a lot of these issues aren't new issues. Yep. Um, the, these are things that just haven't really been taken on head on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like I said, we need some, some, we need, some, yes, sir. <laughs> we need to put the starters in. <laughs> And stop playing with uh with our community, man. So you got it. You got any uh final words for for our uh our audience before you leave, man? Where can they find you on social media? Or, you know. Um. So I am at Tommy Pearson Jr. So I e on Tommy and Pearson. Okay. So at Tommy Pearson Jr. That's my Twitter. That's how you can find me on Facebook, or or what have you. Um, I still have a website that at some point I'm going to uh, switch to, 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 to make it say some other stuff, but it's at PearsonJr.com. Yes, sir. Uh, PearsonJr.com. And, you know, however I can be of assistance in helping us to move uh, the community forward, I am all in. And so... While I don't want this thing to be about me, I, I want it to be about how we could collectively come together to make North County, make St. Louis County, make this region, make this state, make the nation uh, what it needs to be. And, and so whatever role that we can come together and play together uh, is a conversation that I want to have. And, yes. and, and, I, and feel free, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, and and we can move that forward. So I just want to say to you, man, I, I this again, this is a podcast that is needed because the, the more we can educate people, the more we can educate them on the issues, on, mm -hmm. you know, the candidates, on the elected leadership, on whatever the case may be, I think the better we are as a community. Absolutely. And so I commend you for for taking this on uh, and and however I can help be some win in your sails. Yes, to, sir. To help you move forward, man. Uh, I'm gonna hey, I'm gonna be yeah. calling I'm gonna be calling you to take over the host sometime for me, man. So Hey, well, you know, Get every ready. host need to be able to to take a break and a vacation every <laughs> now and then. Yes, sir. Get, <laughs> hey, get ready. We gonna we gonna definitely link up, man. And I For appreciate sure. you, man, always being a good friend, um, being a straight shooter with me, man, and uh, a, a supporter. Um, yes, and, and you know, man, anything that you have going on, 
uh, let me know. And you know, I'll definitely be here for you. Be tuned in to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Had a great show. Uh, I appreciate uh representative, former state representative, Reverend Tommy Pearson Jr. for uh hanging out with us on Sunday, man. This holiday weekend, man. I appreciate you. Uh I appreciate our audience for sticking with us for four weeks. We're gonna keep this going. Um make it bigger and better every week. Um, looking forward to a, uh, some more awesome guests. Um, we're going to be educating the community on all the different issues that's coming up, conversations that we need to have. This is the platform for you. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Facebook Live. We're on Facebook Live right now. Uh, we're on YouTube. Everything is the Politics Podcast. I, I didn't misspell politics. It's L-O-U for a reason. I'm from the Lou and I'm proud. Um you can find me on Twitter. Um, you can catch this podcast on Pie Bean. You can catch it on 88.1 The Truth, Internet Radio, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Amazon Music, and Spotify. So it's no excuse. You can catch us everywhere, man. We appreciate you all. Until next week, we're going to holler. We out this thing. Peace. Peace.